Hi everyone, it's Brandon. Thank you for joining me today for another skincare vlog. If you don't know who I am, my name is Brandon. I'm a medical writer. I've written over 1,800 medical articles, all of which you can find freely on the web, most of which have been focused in the field of dermatology and skincare research, and I'll leave a link down below so you can check those out. Today we're going to be talking about a topic that is really important to me, something that I've been trying to really address in my own skincare, and that is the topic of transepidermal water loss, or basically skin dryness. I'm going to be talking about what it is, the contributors to it, the causes, what can be done about it, and the products that can be used to combat that, the transepidermal water loss, or TEWL. But before I begin, please hit the like button. It really helps me to reach more people and grow my channel, and I really, really appreciate it. And definitely hit that subscribe button down below as well. I'd love to have you join in the skincare research conversation that we have going on here on this channel. It's growing every single day, and I love to learn from everyone that comments on my videos. So definitely subscribe, stick around for future skincare research videos, anti-aging skincare research videos, as well as product and sunscreen reviews. The transepidermal water loss, or again, TEWL, is basically the evaporation of water or moisture from your skin into the ambient humidity, into your environment. Basically, the environment, depending upon the conditions that, that you're in, whether it's the weather conditions outside or if you have your air conditioning going or your heater going in the winter, the environment will pull moisture out of your skin, creating more dryness, more roughness. People with higher levels of transepidermal water loss tend to have higher levels of skin barrier impairment. So you see that a lot in people with certain dermatologic conditions like um, atopic dermatitis, for instance. In contrast, lower levels of TEWL are associated with healthier skin. And there are certain laboratory there's certain ways in the laboratory to measure TEWL, to measure skin dryness, but basically you probably know your own skin and whether or not it's dry, oily, combination, etc. You know, all those terms that we, we apply to it. Me in particular, my skin tends to go more, sore, go more toward the dry aspect. So I personally have to use certain methods, products, ingredient strategies to reduce that um, evaporation, that water loss from my skin. There are a lot of simple causes that you probably have experienced um, whenever your skin gets dry. Exercise and sweating, for instance, can actually increase the dryness of your skin because even though exercise causes you to sweat, if you are dabbing off that sweat or allowing that sweat to evaporate, which that's the only thing you can do after exercise, it's going to pull extra moisture from your skin. Weather conditions can also affect the, the slightly affect the moisture, your moisture barrier. So if it is really humid outside, you tend to have a little bit more moisture in the, in the ambient in, uh, in your environment. So a lot of times when um, you are in more humid environments, subtropical, tropical environments, um, like from like where I'm from, from Houston, it tends to be very, very humid or if it's rainy outside, it tends to be very humid. I tend to not need to use a heavy, thick moisturizer during those times just because there's already that extra moisture in the air. But if you live in more desert areas like Arizona or New Mexico or California, you know, way out west, you're gonna have drier air and you're gonna be plagued more so with the problem of transepidermal water loss, so the moisture, your moisture barrier being impaired and the water evaporating into your into the environment. Also over time, as we travel through life, um, travel forward through life, certain uh, moisturizing factors in our skin begin to decline. So those include things like ceramides, um, as well as hyaluronic acid. Ceramides are a class of lipids, the main class of lipids in the skin matrix alongside fatty acids and cholesterol. Like I said, over time, ceramides begin to decline, but the topical application of ceramides are products that contain Ceramides can mimic the skin's natural moisturizing systems and increase and improve the skin barrier over time. And really, there is a great deal of research showing that ceramides are important for combating transepidermal water loss, for combating skin dryness, people with dry skin or mature skin. And there are several products available today that you can get, that are moisturizers, for instance, that contain ceramides. A high level of ceramides, for instance, the product line from CeraVe contains ceramides. I think it contains about three ceramides, ceramide EOP, NP, and AP maybe, or, or yeah, I think that's what they are. 
Um, but there are other products that contain ceramides as well. For example, one moisturizer that I'm using that I really, really like a lot and that I've reviewed on this channel is the Ordinary Natural Moisturizing Factors Plus HA. This moisturizer is kind of on the thicker side, but it also contains ceramides, so it helps to just replenish those ceramides in your skin. That's incredibly helpful if you, again, are in a dry environment or if you just are prone to dry skin. Definitely, I would highly suggest reaching for that product. It contains no fragrance and it has other ingredients that I'll talk about in just a minute that help to improve the skin barrier function and improve hydration and reduce the risk of transepidermal water loss. And like I mentioned, hyaluronic acid is another uh, hydrating factor that is actually produced by our body naturally and, and is found in large amounts in our skin. It helps to plump up the skin, retain moisture, uh, there are serums available that you can get freely. Well, not freely, but you have to pay for it. But you can get quite easily, I guess I should say, um, hyaluronic acid serums that are that have you know a high concentration of hyaluronic acid in it. Some people tend not to react well to that, and I tend to personally avoid that for myself, um, just because hyaluronic acid is found in pretty much every moisturizer that you can think of, and even high high. Hydration boost moisturizer, moisturizers will contain hyaluronic acid, high levels of it. So just adding more on top of what you're already doing. I mean, it may just be providing limited additive, you know, quality to your to your hydration. It may not be providing a statistically significant increase in hydration. And if you're just using a serum and you're not putting a thick moisturizer over it anyway, that probably contains hyaluronic acid. That serum, that moisture from that serum is just going to evaporate because you're not putting an occlusive agent over it to really adhere it to the skin and keep it from evaporating. So if you're just using hyaluronic acid serum without putting a moisturizer over it, it is going to evaporate and cause even more irritation and skin dryness. But if you do go the hyaluronic acid serum route, again, like I am saying and just emph emphasizing, make sure that you are putting a moisturizer over it just to make sure that you know, you're not you're not increasing that irritation and you're not increasing that dryness because that's just going to impair the skin barrier even further and that's not something that you want. But like I said, the Ordinary contains both ceramides, I'm trying to reach for it, both ceramides as well as hyaluronic acid. So really, ideally, you don't necessarily need a serum. Again, if you are maybe living in a dry climate, a desert climate, or you're visiting the mountains or something, or if you're in the winter and you really need that extra boost, maybe a serum might be a good choice, but in my opinion, all you really need is a good, good, high quality moisturizer that contains that hyaluronic acid in it. Okay, so now that I've just sort of moved away from the causes, let's go ahead and look at other certain ingredients that can help to combat transepidermal water loss. Another ingredient is Centella Asiatica extract, which is um, an extract from an herbaceous plant. This has been, this has become quite popular in recent, in recent years, especially with the, um, I think it's a Korean brand, Purito, uh, they put Centella Asiatica in a lot of things, but there's there's many other moisturizers, creams, sunscreens, lotions, serums that contain Centella Asiatica extract. But basically what this is, it's extracts from the plant that contain anti-inflammatory properties that have been shown to contribute to improvements in the skin barrier function. And there's also research showing that it can help to reduce transepidermal water loss. So it is a very promising, promising plant-based ingredient that I personally really love and I love to find products that have it in there. And before the whole Purito scandal, uh, I was able to snag the Centella Green Level uh, sunscreen, SPF 50, supposedly. Uh, and this has Centella Asiatic extract in it. The brand Purito, actually you can, there's, there's other products that they have, moisturizers, creams, serums, lotions, things like that, that have the Centella Asiatica extract in it that can probably, you know, hopefully, possibly go a long way in helping to really reduce that inflammation in your skin, which again is a, like I say in my previous videos, is a driver in the pathogenesis of skin aging, but it can also help to really contribute to an improvements in your skin barrier function and reduce that dryness. Another ingredient is urea, which is an endogenous metabolite. This ingredient can improve or enhance stratum corneum hydration. It's been, it's been shown clinically to enhance stratum corneum or skin hydration and also improve the permeability of the skin barrier and in conjunction act as a anti or have antimicrobial properties. And again, the Wonder Moisturizer by The Ordinary that I love and I'll, I'll highly, highly recommend is 
has urea in it in addition to those ceramides and hyaluronic acids. So you can't really go wrong with this one in my personal opinion, especially if you have skin dryness. But products that specifically have urea in them that they call out to help reduce skin dryness that I personally recommend is the Eucerin products. Um, they have the Roughness Relief Cream. I've it written down so I don't mess it up, but the Eucerin's Roughness Relief Cream has urea in it, as well as the Dry Skin Intensive 10% Lotion with urea. Check those out. I have affiliate links down below that you can check out those products. They're pretty affordable. They are drugstore drug products, so you can buy them. They have urea in it, and they go a long way in helping to improve that stratum corneum hydration and improve uh, the, the overall hydration of your skin long term. And you probably saw that I was using a face mask in my week vlog that I've been that I did recently. And uh, that actually has Centella Asiatica extract in it too. And that's the Sisa Live Ampule face mask. I have one more, but I got this in my Stylevana haul that I did months ago. And I really like the I like the face mask even though it has fragrance in it. I think you can't really get away with that, but it also has other hydrating ingredients like shea butter. Shea butter is another hydrating ingredient that can help the, the skin barrier, and it can also help to retain moisture because shea butter, in addition to being an emollient, which means it just softens and smooths skin and skin cells and gives a smooth, hydrated appearance, shea butter also acts as an occlusive agent. I mean, it's a hard fat so that when it goes on your skin, it can really provide a barrier to evaporation of, of water. So when you apply a moisturizer, for instance, that has shea butter in it, which is again, a fantastic ingredient, it's going to help to just sort of keep that water intact and keep it in your skin longer. Okay, and one more skin ingredient that I think is fantastic and it's just a one ingredient product, and that is petrolatum. Petrolatum or petroleum jelly is a highly refined oil, highly refined product. It's used in many moisturizers, many cosmetic applications, as well as there are medical grade petrolatum products that are used in the clinic, that are used in medical facilities and in healthcare settings. Petrolatum or petroleum jelly, let me just set it down, has been shown consistently and over time to really improve the function of the skin barrier, help to reduce transepidermal water loss. You can apply it directly to your skin and directly to your face. As soon as you get out of the shower, just apply it to damp skin. Make sure that you uh, rub it in your hands and let it just sort of react to your body heat uh, so that it can melt down But then and then apply it to a damp skin. That will really, really significantly, and I mean dramatically, reduce evaporation of water from your skin. You, you've probably heard of slugging, which is um, sort of a skincare trend that actually has been around for several several years, um, centuries even, and that's applying the petrolatum or a thick jelly type uh, occlusive agent to your skin to reduce evaporation of water. Contrary to popular belief, petrolatum, but petroleum jelly doesn't necessarily cause pores, so you don't have to worry about it cl or cl clogging pores. It doesn't really clog pores, but whether or not it contributes to acne, I think is sort of very individualized, but I think you can rest assured that it, it's not going to clog your pores. And one helpful hint that I find for reducing skin dryness and reducing transepidermal water loss is as soon as you wash your face, as soon as you get out of the shower, make sure that you are applying a moisturizer on top of wet, damp skin. Do not dry your skin off. Do not pat it dry. Um, apply on damp, wet skin, because you're going to be maximizing that moisture that's there from your shower, from washing your face, and you're going to be occluding it with a, with occlusive agents in the moisturizer, and you're just gonna be maximizing that moisture, that that moisture, that, that H2O in your skin, and the occlusive agents in that moisturizer are going to prevent it from evaporating. So I think that's just one helpful hint that, you know, is something that I use personally, and I found pretty good luck with it. Other helpful tips that are not product related or you know skincare product related are including a humidifier in your near vicinity every single day whether it's the summer or the winter we often have our air conditioning or our heater turned on and that's going to be zapping drying out the air it's going to be taking the moisture out of the air which means it's also going to be contributing to the moisture being taken out of your skin so it can fill your your environment so i highly recommend using a humidifier i do occasionally whenever i remember it i have a humidifier um but i i find that that especially during while i'm sleeping in the morning my skin feels more hydrated more 
moist, I guess I, I should say, in the morning when I wake up versus when I don't use it. And again, when you're using a moisturizer at night, and you have those humectant agents in there like hyaluronic acid or glycerin and or glycerin, it's also gonna be attracting water from your environment. The, the ambient humidity is gonna be attracting water, helping to really further increase the your skin moisture barrier or improve your skin moisture barrier. Another thing that you can do that actually technically is skincare product related is just reapply your sunscreen every single, or throughout the day. And you should be doing that anyway, but if you're reapplying consistently throughout the day, two to three times a day, you're going to be improving, you're gonna just be moisturizing your skin all day throughout the day, and you're gonna be adding more moisture to the skin, which, you know, in, in excess is not a good thing. You definitely don't wanna be adding too much moisturizer, but if you are doing it two to three times a day, making, not only are you taking advantage of the sunscreen filters and you're increasing your ability to protect yourself from the sun, you're increasing the sun protective factor on your skin, not only that, but you're also just adding more moisture to your skin without being excessive, of course, but you're just making sure that you're replenishing that moisture that moisture throughout the day. And if you're using sunscreen that contains things like urea or ceramides or scintilla asiatic extract, that's just going to help to just improve the uh, your success rate. You can also use face masks at night um, two to three times a week, making sure, again, that you are putting a moisturizer over it. Face masks, they occlude the skin and they add extra moisture to the skin. Whether or not, you know, I don't know if there's a, a great deal of clinical research out there showing that they improve skin barrier significantly or improve or, or reduce trans epidermal water loss significantly, but I, I would assume they, they would because they do, do contain humectants a lot of the times, water, um, other ingredients, other moisturizing ingredients, emollients, occlusive agents. So if you're using sheet masks, uh, face masks like the Sisa Live, for example, two to three times a week, you're just adding extra moisture that you can really take advantage of. When you take them off after 10 minutes or so, again, make sure that you're applying a thick moisturizer. I love The Ordinary, again, I'm not working for them or anything like that. They're not paying me to say that, but I really love just applying that over the moisture that um, those sheet masks give me. Also make sure that you are minimizing exfoliation. I, I love, you know, AHA, BHA chemical exfoliants as much as the next person. And I love obviously retinoids, retinols that also exfoliate the skin. But if you are dealing with an impaired skin barrier, first of all, you probably want to see a dermatologist, a clinical dermatologist or a doctor. But if you are dealing with dryness, transepidermal water loss, so the last thing that you want to do is cause more irritation and more skin cell turnover than um, is necessary because that's just going to contribute to further dryness and, and irritation. So if you are using exfoliants, make sure that you are maximizing the, the moisture that you can with humidifiers, with moisturizers, with sheet masks, with um, you know everything else that I, I've mentioned in this in this uh, in this vlog, urea, ceramides for instance, and possibly even reduce your your reliance on these exfoliations or exfoliators because you're gonna be exfoliating your skin no matter what, I mean, your skin cells are going to turn over. Over time, they they start doing it more or more slowly. But you know, just the act of washing your face and um, putting on sunscreen, using a retinoid every day, that's going to be exfoliating your skin anyway. So whether or not you need extra exfoliators is kind of you know it's it's arguable. You could also sleep on a silk pillowcase, and I know that sounds luxurious, but Silk definitely does help to reduce the absorption of skincare products from your skin. Uh, if you're using a cotton pillowcase or cotton bedding, that will really absorb a lot of moisture, a lot of skincare products. So using a silk pillowcase, I have one linked down below that I use. Um, I just bought it on Amazon. I don't think it was very expensive. It was probably, I don't think it was very pricey. It was probably maybe 20 to $30, but that can help really cut down the absorption of those skincare products and help just let, let those products you know last longer for you so you're not going through them as quickly because you're not having to apply them as frequently. And it's really, in my personal opinion, I really do believe it helps to really improve um, the level of hydration in your skin. So those are my tips and tricks of reducing a transepidermal water loss. If you have any that I didn't mention that you personally use, that you will enjoy, that you've heard of, leave a comment down below and let me know what's worked for you or what you've heard of, or if you have any other questions on trans, tra tra <laughs> or if you have any other questions on transepidermal water loss. Thank you for watching. And again, if you like this video, please hit the like button down below. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.